welcome to this open education resource. My name is Alfred Bransden. I am professor in practical theology at the Faculty of Theology of the Northwest University in South Africa. I'm also the editor of the book under discussion in this presentation, The Human Dilemma of the Displacement Towards a Practical Theology and Ecclesiology of Home, that was published during 2020 with AOSIS. If I have to provide some idea of what this publication is about, a good start would be to contemplate the, the cover page of this publication, on which a, a homeless person with a few earthly possessions is depicted on the steps of a church that could be anywhere in this world. To my mind, this poignant picture captures the essence of this publication in a powerful way. What is the church to do about a worldwide phenomenon that has brought the destitute to the steps of the church? It is very meaningful on this cover picture that the doors of the church is not open as local churches and faith communities often do not have a ready answer to this challenge. Despite this, people find themselves turned to the church because the church is a, a beacon of hope, a symbol of hope, in all of society. It is in the light of this dilemma that a number of practical theologians, mostly from the Northwest University in South Africa, decided to embark on research to offer some insights to this discourse. In the end, we were privileged to have 12 authors on board to participate in the project, among them also the well-known South African migrant veteran Paul Ferrain. Traditionally, it is the task of practical theology to reflect critically on the communicative actions of the Church in order to remain true to the gospel and also part of God's mission in this world. And it is this collaborative venture that resulted in this unique publication, which attempts to offer some practical theological and ecclesiological perspectives on the issue of human displacement. If I have to identify the, the main question this book grappled with, one could say it was this. What kind of church would be relevant in today's world? And what kind of care should the church provide in the face of the growing predicament of human displacement? What kind of church would be relevant in today's world? And what kind of care should this church provide in the face of the human predicament of uh, or the predicament of human displacement. A good way to get some idea of the type of answers that the authors produced is to provide you with an overview of the content of this publication. The theme of the first chapter was on becoming a streetwise home church within the dynamics of social coexistence reforming cathedral ecclesiologies within the migrant dilemma of human displacement. This very important chapter was written by Daniel Lowe, a very well-known and also a, a veteran pastoral theologian from South Africa, but also that is uh, acknowledged worldwide, internationally, for his work over many years. And what Daniel Lowe uh, offered this publication was to make a mind shift from so-called cathedral ecclesiologies, in other ways a, a very fixed view and perception of the church, that this fixed perceptions must migrate to what he calls a streetwise home church, a very relevant term within the context of the rest of the book, so that the church can become streetwise in order to minister to and also to serve the migrants on our doorsteps, so to speak. 
The second chapter is named Negotiating Nostalgia, a pastoral reflection on the notion of home within the context of displacement on the African context. This chapter was written by myself and in this uh, uh, chapter I focus not only on the phenomenon of human displacement itself but also on the very important concept of home. What is the meaning of home and why is it such a challenge when people lose what they call home? In the light of this I argued that losing your home would uh, result in suffering from nostalgia, that very painful longing for what we understand and what we call home. And then I offered what I think a pastoral approach to someone suffering from nostalgia would look like. So this then chapter two. The third chapter in this publication was written by Christopher McGezi and he looked at some of the, uh, of the complexities of migration challenges, especially in South Africa, and he offered a theological perspective to shape our thinking around this from Luke 10 verse 25 to 37 in what he calls the Good Samaritan Framework. Moving on to chapter 4, which was written by Bumani Magezi. He has written this chapter entitled Towards Understanding Migrants' Coping Mechanisms and the Development of an Operative Ecclesiology as Church Care Response, a Home Away from Home Migrants' Church Care. And in this chapter, uh, Magezi also offers us a ecclesiological perspective on what he, on what he calls church care where we focus on the pastoral responsibilities, not just, just of the church, but also the responsibilities that he feels migrants uh, should also display in this context. The fifth chapter moves on to a very important issue when it comes to the predicament of human displacement, and that is the whole matter of xenophobia. In this chapter, Marius Nell is evaluating prophecy as a South African New Pentecostal pastoral response to the challenges of xenophobia. And I think whenever and whenever we talk about the, the issue of uh, migration, the issue of human displacement, xenophobia um, should be up there as one of the very important themes that we should ponder and should address uh, in such a discourse. Chapters 6 and 7 both have a familial uh, focus, if one could call it that. Um, in chapter 6, the title is The Plight of Unaccompanied Migrant Children in South Africa a chapter that was written by Hanali Yates and Sini Shisale, and they discuss challenges en route to a practical theology and ecclesiology of home. And to my mind, this chapter makes a very important contribution to the rest of the work, as it features this very important aspect of this whole dialogue in terms of children, and especially in this chapter, unaccompanied migrant children, which one could sense is a very sensitive matter and also a very important matter. Continuing the, the focus on the family is chapter 7 that is written by Faisal Freaks, where he focuses upon fathers that are jailed uh, during this whole migrant process. A life beyond bars creating a space of dignity and hope for the displaced father in prison. And with this, he continues the focus on families and especially how fathers that are imprisoned, uh, that, that land behind bars, can be pastorally approached and supported uh, in such a time. Chapter 8 brings us a missional perspective on the whole 
subject of migration entitled Migrants, Mishu Day and the Church in South Africa, a chapter that was written by uh, Hannes Klutzer and Paul Verein. And this chapter further contributes to a migrant friendly ecclesiology, but then from a missional perspective, and it suggests um, certain responses for local churches in South Africa. It makes use of Matthew 13 uh, by using um, the parable of the sower as an analogy to discuss some of the suggested responses. The ninth chapter by Amanda Duplessis is entitled A Pastoral Encounter with the Stranger, the Basic Ambivalence of Hostility to Hospitality Inherent to the Human Response. This chapter makes an important pastoral contribution to the publication as it focuses on the role of the church and pastoral caregiving ministry in helping displaced people not only find resilience, but also to find a sense of meaning in life. Therefore, a very important contribution to this book. The final chapter, chapter 10, is entitled Embracing Compassion, Hospitality, Forgiveness and Reconciliation, the Quest for Peaceful Living in the Human Displacement Crisis. This chapter is written by Rudy Denton, and he focuses on the multidimensional concepts of compassion, hospitality, forgiveness, and reconciliation, so that one can reposition oneself uh, within a stance of xenophilia as opposed to xenophobia. And just this chapter makes an appeal to people in host countries to rather take the stance of uh, xenophilia instead of xenophobia in order to offer a home to the displaced. From this overview of the chapters, it should be clear that there are at least three distinct lines that are offered in this collaborative work. I think this book first and foremost offers a theological reflection on the stance of the church and society towards the issue of migrants. Not only is this phenomenon recognized in this book, but the authors guide the reader to see migrants from a theological perspective. That is, it challenges some of the current stereotypes that we hold so that we can move away from these cathedral ecclesiologies, these very fixed ecclesiologies, to become a streetwise church. Equally important is the notion of home that is under discussion in this book. What is the social and the theological meaning of home? It argues that when one understands this notion of home, one will also be in a better position to understand the existential crisis of those who have lost their home for whatever reason. And it also underlines the, the calling of the faith community to become a new home for those who have become homeless. And then there is, of course, the very strong pastoral line that is distinguishable in this book that informs pastoral care with migrants. A reality that these days confront many inner city churches and especially churches in countries where migration has really become a, a big problem. So who will typically benefit from reading this book? I think that all practitioners that engage with migrants and other homeless people from a Christian perspective may benefit from the theory and the praxeology that is suggested in this book. And when one looks at the growth in this phenomenon, the phenomenon of human displacement, I think that this book also may become an important resource in the training of ministers, especially ministers who will one day minister to people that have become homeless. 
So I thank you for viewing this open education resource and I trust that you will benefit from downloading and studying this important work. Thank you.